put this question to the voters about priorities. Um, I think we, we all, well, I know we all agree that we need to uh, adequately fund our roads. And so we've been having a lot of conversations about how we get there. And I think there's been a lot of good discussions uh, in that front. And uh, including Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your leadership in looking at, hey, how do we get, how do we use cap and trade funds? To be part of that, uh, to be part of that discussion, and how we adequately fund roads, and I think our our constituents expect that we that we look not only at new revenues, but we look at how do we deal with existing revenues? How do we deal with money that we already have, and how do we either uh, reprioritize that or find ways to get the most and maximize that that revenue that we already have? And I think at least part of that discussion is about. Um, high-speed rail. Now, I know we have several high-speed rail bills before you today, um, but the heart of AB 1768 is just to ask the voters, does it make sense to re you know, reappropriate this money from high-speed rail and put it into our roads so that we're get again, that we are getting the most out of the, of the money that's already out there, that's already been authorized by voters and by the legislature, how can we get the most out of that money to do what we need to do for our existing road system? Uh, so today, uh, that's all I'm asking for is that, uh, that, we, that this is part of that discussion, uh, asking the voters if they would like to reprioritize that money for our roads. And that will go along with the other discussions that we're having uh, here in this body, in this committee especially, uh, but throughout the, throughout the legislature about how we get the most out of the money that we have. Cap and trade funds, uh, truck weight fees, um, you know, talking about, you know, is there an appropriate uh, general fund commitment that should be made to roads? Um, I, I, for one, think that there should be. And I think a lot of our, my constituents say, you know, hey, when I pay my taxes, at least one of those things that I expect my tax money to go to is our roads. So. Um, I consider this part of that discussion. I'd ask for your consideration and just let's, let's just put this question to the voters and they can make that decision for us. How should we prioritize uh, this money? I would also note that this, the way this works is that if the voters were to approve it, this is money that would go to the State Highway Operation and Protection Program, the SHOP program, uh, to help support our highway system uh, that supports all of us, all of our districts. And uh, with that, I will... Uh, submit my comments to the committee and be happy to answer any questions. I do have one witness uh, with me today, uh, David Wolf from Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Mr. Wolf, please proceed. Mr. Chairman, members, thank you so much. David Wolf with the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. We're in support of the bill today. Members, there's so many things wrong with high-speed rail that it deserves to go back to voters for their consideration. Let's just tick off some of the ways, why don't we? The entire construction plan has shifted from the south of the state to the, to the north of the state, putting cap and trade funding at risk. There is now a blended system members using light rail tracks and not the dedicated high speed rail line that voters approved in 2008. There's next to no federal funding. There is no private investment. None of that continues to be forthcoming. And questions now even abound members as to whether the authority is being honest with its cost estimates construction change orders, ridership estimates, pretty much everything, members, in its business plan. And it's worth noting, with these delays, members, Hyperloop technology, yes, indeed, Hyperloop, may overtake high-speed rail as a more viable and a faster transportation option. Members, given that we have a $58 billion road maintenance backlog over the next 10 years, as the author mentioned, it's important that we spend valuable transportation bond dollars on two things. Number one, projects that will last the length of the bond, and more importantly, get Californians moving again using our existing transportation infrastructure, because last I checked, most of us still use cars. I'd ask for an I vote. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Seeing that, we'll go to any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill. Please proceed. State your name and who you represent, please. Good afternoon. 
Mr. Chair, members, SRDS, on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council. Um, as stated before, our members are currently building the high-speed rail project now. Uh, we have uh, countless reports in the Fresno about uh, apprenticeship opportunities opening up in an area that has been severely uh, impoverished, uh, not many economic opportunities. What we see with the high-speed rail project is the ability for Fresno not only to be a hub for different housing and to send people back and forth from economic powerhouses such as the Bay Area in Los Angeles, but it is itself also in the Central Valley to actually have a diverse economy where companies are also willing to work there and, and relocate there from other areas as the Bay Area expands, as other areas expand. Um, we see the high-speed rail project is vital towards uh, the Central Valley's growth and economic diversity. Um, we see this bill as uh, uh, yet another one of these uh, similar legislations that you've seen before. In fact, I had a, um, a conversation with the assembly member. We were kind of jokingly, I made the mistake of thinking this is his second bill redirecting high-speed rail. He corrected me, said it wasn't him. Um, but there are other bills that were very similar. Uh, we, we want to thank uh, the, the, this committee uh, for handling these bills uh, very carefully, for looking at the High Speed Rail Project, uh, reviewing it, and making them accountable for it. But we see that this, we need just more transportation funding period. We want to thank you, Assembly Member, uh, for, and Mr. Chair, for your leadership on this issue. We understand you have legislation out there. You've been uh, driving the train, basically, on this one uh, to try to make sure that everybody's paying attention because, in the end, we need high speed rail. We need, uh, we need the shop program. We need the STIP. We need every source of funding that's out there, and we need the financing for it. So we can't afford not to do this project. For those reasons, we oppose this project. Thank you. Please state your name and who you represent, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Keith Dunn on behalf of the Association of California High-Speed Trains. I'd like to uh, associate myself with Mr. Diaz's comments. I'll take it from a little uh, different approach. Uh, there's actually been eight measures that have sought to redirect uh, high-speed rail funds over the last year and a half. Uh, this is the ninth. Um, I think it's worthy to note that the, the, the constituents here in the state of California have also had the opportunity to place this on the ballot before. They've rejected it in each occasion that they've been presented with that opportunity for lack of support. So as we mentioned, and I agree, we do need road monies, we need STIP, we need shop, we need transit. We need all of it. The fact of the matter is that our tax base, which currently pays for our transportation system, is a diminishing return. The way that we collect that tax is we get more. We hear about these uh, high uh, vehicle, high uh, mileage vehicles that are coming on the road. We're getting a diminishing return on that gas. So we need to start looking at ways that we're paying for our roads and our infrastructure and exploring other options. We would encourage uh, everyone to look at the chairman's bill. We think it's a good idea. We think that there's lots of opportunity out there to look at how we pay and what we're paying for and where those dollars go. But high-speed rail, the voters of California have repeatedly endorsed this project. We've been before the body here and the Senate as well and talk about the benefits of the project and the fact that we're moving forward employing Californians, providing opportunities, increasing the environment, uh, uh, improving the environment for people in the Central Valley now and soon in the Bay Area in Southern California. So while we appreciate uh, the author's desire to see dollars spent on shop and in the STIP, and I know that his district needs lots of improvements in their infrastructure, this isn't the way to go about it. We'd ask for a no vote. Thank you. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the bill? Seeing none, any members of the committee that have questions of the author? Assembly Member Brown. Mr. Gallagher, how much money has already been spent on high speed rail? Do you know? I'm not sure the exact figure, but I think it's is it somewhere around a billion at this point? Is that right? So what happens to the money that's already been allocated or that's already been spent? And um, what do we do if if we try to stop it now? Well, I guess my point to that would be, you know, we, we do shift priorities. We shift priorities in this body all the time. You know, as the chairman was talking about, uh, even with the incentive bill that was before us, maybe we need to talk about changing um, our benchmark targets or extending those targets. When we see, as things progress, we, we sometimes change and reallocate our resources. To me, this is a similar deal. We're seeing that with high-speed rail, yes, it has the opportunity to provide job, much-needed jobs, uh, but so could road construction. Road construction can provide a whole lot of jobs for people as well. 
and we're looking out there and saying, hey, this project's getting more and more expensive. Perhaps the bond that's already out there is not going to be enough to get this project completed. And at the same time, we now know we've, we've got a huge deficit in our roads. So why not go back to the voters and say, hey, is it more appropriate that we spend this money on, they're both transportation related, is it more appropriate that we spend that money on our roads that will also provide those vital jobs that we need, um, but also take care of vital infrastructure? Is this going to take the governor's signature? Uh, yes, it would, in order okay. to put it on the ballot, yes. That's what I thought. Thank any you. Other, any other questions of the committee, of the author? Seeing none, I'm going to take that as your close. Uh, we have a first by Assemblymember Baker and a second by Mr. Linder. Um, Mr. Gallagher, I highly suggest that you tour the facility like I did. I took the bus from Sacramento to Stockton. I took the train from Stockton to Fresno and toured every bit of that facility and saw what it's doing for that for that for those communities and the thousands of jobs that it's putting together with disadva disadvantaged uh, employers, uh, you name it, the gamut. Recycled rebar for that whole whole project I mean it's amazing what they're doing and for me to walk on that aqueduct in Madeira and seeing the quality of work they're doing and what they're accomplishing because of the challenges that they've faced up till now the legal challenges and the right-of-way acquisition any construction uh, project has uh, challenges it's how you adapt and uh, this is necessary and if you look at the power structure in California it's about 25 miles from the Oregon border to the Mexican border at Tijuana, 25 miles in from the coast, the Central Valley gets left out all the time. This is their field of dreams. And we need to be able to be the first people in the nation to have something like this to, to be able to tout uh, that we, we, we put people first. So I'm going to tell you right now that I understand your concerns. This is why this committee had an oversight hearing. Uh, and I'm, I have a bill to put ex officio members on the, trans, uh, the uh, rail authority for this. Uh, and as a contractor, a former contractor, I take it as my um, objective to be the watchdog for this body. I um, highly recommend, as mentioned by Mr. Dunn, that you look really hard at 1591 if you want the shop funded. It does it. Might take a hard vote, but we will make sure that it gets accomplished that way. With that, I will not be supporting your bill. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due pass to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier? No. Frazier, no. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Brown? No. Brown, no. Chu? No. Chu, no. Daly? Dodd, Eduardo Garcia, Eduardo Garcia, no. Gomez, Gomez, no. Kim, Kim, I. Mathis, Mathis, I. Medina, Medina, no. Melendez, Nazarian, O'Donnell. So your bill has four. We'll keep the roll open for the absent members. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher.